So what is dating like for you being a porn star? Dating, um, at first, I felt like I didn't have any time to date. I was like, okay, like this is all going so fast. I don't feel like I, I'm meeting so many new people too. And like, like what if I don't choose the right one? Because like everyone seems so great at the beginning. And then you find out like that they have allegations and it's horrible. Did that happen to you? Oh, no, thankfully. Well, I mean, even just seeing someone on set and thinking like, oh, like, what a great guy. Yeah. Like, what a great woman. Yeah. Then it's just seeing stuff coming out on the internet. Oh, yeah. No, I've had people on my podcast where I'm just like, ooh, like, you know, yeah, like six months later. Oh, that's so scary. (laughs) Maybe I should take that episode down. Right? That is so scary. Didn't know that at the time. Or like, I've had to like cancel them because something came out and I was like, oh, Oh, no. Yeah, it was so awkward. Oh, that is (laughs) awful. Yeah. But dating, I think, is almost the same because I'm still the same person. I just have this added pressure of like, what if someone wouldn't like that, like my job, I guess. Which is (sighs) is a common problem, right? Because most guys don't want to share their woman with other men, even if it's just a job. Right. And I think that dating like someone in the industry would is, is so easy because you have someone that does understand mm-hmm. like, okay, it's a job and then we can talk about work and then it's just work and it's not like, uh, like, mm-hmm. because even like for me, like I am like an extremely jealous person. Mm. So like, I so you don't think that you could date a male performer. Oh, I think it would depend because if it was like, I don't know, it would really depend. Yeah. It would have to be someone that's like very, very good at communication and like I know is like super business mm-hmm. and not like <laughs> yeah, just a la la la. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All the time, but. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> I No, I get it. I get it. I mean, it's okay to like recognize that, you know. Maybe it wouldn't easily go both ways for you. Yeah. Right. Because you are you are dating somebody now, but they're not a performer. Right. It just ends up working. Mm -hmm. It just ends up working so much easier because. Yeah, they know that it's just a job and we are able to talk about work and yeah, it's it's great. Before you met him, did you try to date other guys and had issues or were you just working so much you were like, I'm not even looking? Well, I had like little crushes, but they were married or already Mm -hmm. had girlfriends and like I didn't want to overstep or anything. And I had, I am someone that will fall in love with anyone that's nice to me. So like I'll have like an intense crush for like a day Mm -hmm. and then find out, you know, like, oh, they're married or like they have a girlfriend. Okay, cool. We're just like really good friends then. Yeah. Um, So I had like little crushes and stuff like that, but then... Yeah, I never really wanted to to date. Right. And so now with the relationship that you have, do you guys ever have jealousy issues that come up? Like, when do you know that you need to communicate about something? I think that it's really trial and error. Mm-hmm. So we'll talk about boundaries, like, and then not realize even like if you don't realize that something is a boundary until it happens yeah like that's okay but hey next time like this is a boundary for me and that's just constantly changing too Mm -hmm. so like constantly like oh yeah and like you know what i'm fine with that i'm fine with that cool but you just have to constantly keep talking yeah and that's what it's that's the only way it's going to work yeah in this industry is if you just constantly are updating each other and talking and communicating about like what you're okay with and what you're not and like what you want and expect and everything. (laughs) Yeah. I remember when I was interviewing, I think it was Jet Setting Jasmine and she's, you know, in a relationship with King Noir. I've had them both on both amazing guests. And I remember her because they have an open relationship and they both perform. And I remember her talking to me about how yeah, like boundaries and consent is fluid and it changes. Yes. And I don't know why I had never thought about that before. I think because yeah. I'm in like a pretty like vanilla monogamous relationship where like, you know, we don't, we're not with other people. We're just with each other. So yeah. like, it feels like that like feels simple, I guess. But, you know, she talked about, I think like when, cause she's, she's had a couple of kids with him 
when she's pregnant, she needs like him more. Right. And like, she's not as open to him dating other girls and right. like, that's okay. Cause they talk about that. And then, you know, when she's at a different stage in her life, it might change. And I don't know why it had never occurred to me that, yeah, of course, like boundaries might change. Yeah. Entirely. Um, and that like that constant communication is like so important. Even like with between partners, like if you are with someone different, like your boundaries can be different. Yeah. And that's something that I've had to learn. Like, okay, like with you, like even just with performing, it's like, okay, with you, I know that like, you know, you do this right or like you do this this way. So like I don't have that boundary with you like I would with someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is crazy. 